Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Louie with Pettit's Outdoor Rentals and today I'm here with a video just to talk about some tips on snowmobiling. Mainly it's about what to wear and some things that you can bring with you, but there are a couple other tips thrown in there as well, so I hope this helps you all out. The first thing I wanna talk about is just booking with us. So booking, it's very simple. You can either do it online, you can call us on the phone, or you can stop in one of our shops and we can help get you booked right here in person. When it comes to the actual day or the morning of your rental, we do recommend that you show up about 30 minutes ahead of your reservation time when you're gonna pick up. That just gives us a little bit of time to fill out some paperwork, get you fitted for helmets, and then also do a walkthrough of the machine before you guys take off. So one of our first big tips that we have for it is to make sure that you are checking the weather of your reservation day. You just wanna know what the conditions are gonna be like, especially if we're getting into the negative uh, digits for temps. Um, you know, that's gonna be a big factor in what type of clothing you're gonna wear and just what type of experience you're gonna have out on the trail. So make sure you're checking that weather and you're gonna be prepared for that. And that's the next thing I wanna talk about is what to wear. So we're kinda gonna work from our, our top down. So for our face, big thing that you're gonna want to have is a face mask, okay? And you will want something that is longer that goes down your neck a little bit. Um, the reason for that is you're gonna want this to be tucked underneath your shirt, sweatshirt, jacket, whatever, because if it is a shorter one and your neck is exposed, you're gonna get a lot of wind down in your neck and that's gonna make for a pretty rough day. Um, so you really wanna make sure that you have a long enough face mask that it is going to cover your neck and isn't gonna ride up while you're out there. Okay, so that's the first big one. Next thing uh, is a helmet. So helmets are included with all the rentals. So if you don't have your own, don't worry, we got you covered. Almost all of them are these modular style ones. Um, and now a big thing that, that you can upgrade to, it's only $10 more, is a heated visor. So that makes a really big difference. I was talking about the temps before. Once you get into some negative degrees, sometimes the visors will have a tendency to fog up. So a heated visor is just gonna prevent that from happening. And sometimes even if it's above you know, zero degrees, you're still gonna want that heated visor. So just one thing to keep in mind that you can upgrade to that. And now for the rest of your body, right? So your, your upper body, your lower body. Biggest thing is going to be layers, okay? I'm gonna talk about three main layers. The first one is the base layer. So that is you know, your Under Armour, your long underwear type stuff. You're gonna want a material that is wicking. So it's gonna wick the moisture, the sweat away from your body. So you're not gonna want cotton because that's just gonna absorb it and keep it next to your skin. So your polyesters, different types of wool, different uh, blends that they have out there. That's, good, that's gonna be what you want for your base layer. The next layer that you'll have is an insulating layer. So this will be your fleeces, your sweatshirts, your wool, that type of thing where you wanna have as much of that warm air trapped inside of your, uh, your clothing as you possibly can, okay? And now your last layer, your outer layer is going to be your shell, okay? So this is something you're gonna want it to be windproof. You're gonna want it to be able to block those elements from you. So snow, moisture, wind. Uh, obviously, if you have a snowmobile suit, that's going to be ideal. But if you don't, you just wanna make sure that that outer layer is gonna protect you well enough while you're out on the trails, okay? All right, so now for your, your hands, right? So gloves are very important. We recommend two different styles. So there is the, the three-fingered style that we got here, you know, the little Star Trek gloves, and then just your typical, your normal five-fingered gloves as well. Um, you can see that these are longer, so they're gonna go up your wrist, wrist a little bit, and then it has the drawstring that you can pull to make sure that you can get a good seal on there and you're not gonna get a bunch of wind blowing up your, your uh, jacket, okay? Now, the reason why we don't uh, recommend you have, you know, mittens, the big mitts where you have no fingers, is for braking, right? So on the machine, your brake is gonna be on your left hand here, and if you have those mitts, it's just hard to be able to brake and hold on to the handlebar at the same time. So that's where these are gonna be a little bit more advantageous than, than just the big mitts, okay? Now, all of our sleds, they do have heated hand grips and thumb warmers. 
So that does give a lot of relief to the hands of the driver. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you do rent a two up, uh, that, that that person that's sitting behind you, they don't have those hand warmers. So the next thing that we recommend is just to have some of the uh, you know hand warmers, toe warmers, the body warmers, just these one-time use packs that you can rip open, shake it up a little bit, and give you some warmth. So you, you'll probably wanna have a couple of those stashed away just in case, okay? All right, so now for your feet, okay? You're gonna want socks, you're gonna want wool socks, or just basically not cotton, okay? Cotton is not gonna be your friend for snowmobiling because like I mentioned before, it holds the moisture, it doesn't wick it away from you. Uh, so just make sure you got a good winter sock, wool, or some other type of blend. And if it's cold enough, you might wanna double up on the socks, okay? And for outside of the socks, you got your boots. So for boots, you're just gonna want something obviously warm, insulated, and you'll want a higher boot, right? Like you're not gonna want something that just goes to your ankle because once you get off the sled, say you get it stuck and now you gotta dig it out, you're not gonna want something that just goes to your ankle and it's gonna be packed full of snow. So get a nice higher boot, something rigid, something warm that's gonna protect you while you're out there. All right, so then another thing that we recommend having, maybe just a little bit of water, some snacks, uh, just something that you can replenish yourself with. Now, most of you, you're gonna be stopping along the way, bars, restaurants, to grab some of the drink or eat, but you are gonna want something just in case. Say you break down or you get stuck or something like that. You're gonna want some water, you're gonna want some snacks. So just have a little bit packed with you, like I said, just in case. Now, for these things that you're packing with you, there is a little bit of storage on the machines, but not a lot, okay? So if you can't fit it in just like the pockets on your jacket or your, your snow pants, whatever you're wearing, then just a nice little backpack that you can wear while you're out there is gonna be just fine for you. Uh, Cause like I said, there's really not a whole lot of room or storage on the machines themselves. So if you can't carry it on your, you know, in your pockets, like I said, backpack, something that you can, you know, wear securely while you're out there. Um, the Polaris Ride Command app, okay? That is a big one. Think of that as Google Maps, but for the trails. There, it has a GPS locator on there, so no matter where you're at, if you have service or not, the GPS is gonna keep track of where you are. And then you can also download sections of the map. There again, if you don't have cell service, you're still gonna be covered. You got it downloaded, you got the GPS, you're always gonna know where you're at and where you're going. So very important to have that. And then obviously your phone, um, and you'll want maybe just in case to have a phone bank or a phone charger with you. Now you're not gonna be able to charge them on the machines, but that's where if you just got a little battery pack, you can plug your phone in, or a charger if you do go to a bar or restaurant, plug it in when you stop to warm up, okay? All right, and speaking of bars, restaurants, whatnot, have some cash with you. Uh, some of the bars, restaurants that are around the area, they are cash only, they don't accept cards. So either have cash or have a debit card, something that you can pull money out of machine if need be. So now for a big one, it is the snowmobile safety course. So anyone that was born after January 1st, 1985, it is required that if you're going to be on public trails that you have to have the snowmobile safety course completed through the DNR or one of their affiliate partners. Um, just to give you a heads up, the, the online course takes about two to three hours to complete. So if you do need to take that, just make sure you're setting aside enough time to get that completed. And what's nice is once you have it done, it's good for life. You don't have to renew it, you are just all set. Now, even if you were born before that date and you wanna brush up on some snowmobile safety information, I would still highly recommend doing that. A Lot of good info on there, uh, especially if you haven't ridden for a while or you just don't do it a whole lot. It is nice to be able to go back into that course and refresh yourself. Uh, along with that, you'll want to, if you did have to take that course, you're gonna wanna have that certificate with you just in case you do get stopped by the DNR. And then also your driver's license there again, just in case. One thing that is nice is if you have someone that you're riding with, and that's for a couple different reasons. One, it's just more fun if you got someone that you're out there having fun with. And then also, let's say something were to happen. You get into a wreck, you crash a machine, or you, you find someone else on the, the trail that needs some help. If you have two of you, it's just, it's gonna help you out a lot more in a, a bunch of different scenarios. So we recommend always riding with somebody and not riding solo if you can avoid that. And then kind of in the same regards to riding with a buddy, there's gonna be a lot of people on the trails. We got a short snowmobile season up here, so a lot of people taking advantage of it with the time that they have. 
uh, is make sure you're just riding to your own abilities. You know, so if you're riding with a buddy or even you get up to a stop sign and someone comes up behind you and they maybe have a faster riding style than you do, just let them go in front of you, right? Because you don't wanna be sitting there trying to keep up with someone that you shouldn't be keeping up with or you know, taking different lines that they're taking that you're not comfortable with. So just make sure that you're riding to your own abilities and you're not trying to ride like someone else, okay? With practice, you're gonna get better and better, so just let that happen naturally and don't try to force that. All right, everyone, I hope that this video helped. Um, if you have more questions, whether it be what to wear, what to bring, where to go, anything, please give us a call, shoot us a message. We're always here to help you out because our biggest concern is that everyone has a safe an extremely good time out on the trails. So if there is anything that we can do to help you out with that, let us know. Otherwise, we hope to see you all soon. Thanks a lot.